Jesus name we pray. Almighty Father, we are grateful because your children are ready to hear your word. They are ready to learn your truth. And Father, I'm asking to give them understanding. And I'm praying that the power of your word will be effectual in their lives. And that this which we're teaching them, you will walk out in their lives in Jesus' name. You want a perfect church, a holy church. Father, may we be that perfect church, holy church, by the power of your word in us, in Jesus' name. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. We are taking the message A woman with sanctified heart and holy lifestyle. A woman with sanctified heart and holy lifestyle. So, we are presenting two things. One, sanctified heart. And number two, holy lifestyle. To understand this well, let's open to the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. Matthew chapter 1. We read verse 21. The Bible tells us here, say, and she shall bring forth a song and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins can we chorus this together after me and she shall bring forth a song and thou shalt shall call his name Jesus For he shall save his people from their sin. Now, save his people from sin. That is the main duty of Jesus. The assignment, most important assignment that Jesus came to perform on earth was to save or is to save people from their sin. In the book of Hebrew, I mean the book of uh, Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2 from verse 11. The Bible tells us saying, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Can we read verse 14 together? One, two, go. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity 
and purify unto himself a peculiar people full of good works or zealous of good works. So, to purify a peculiar people, he will redeem, then he will purify. He will redeem, then he will purify from sin. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. The Bible tells us also here, saying, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So all these passages are telling us that the salvation of Jesus from sin is a perfect salvation. In a way that sin in all its fullness will be taken away from your life. Hence, if you still see sin in your life, salvation is not perfected. If you are a believer and sin is still in you, as you notice it, salvation is not perfected. It might be because you have given your life to Christ, you are saved. You really saw that you are not doing your practical sins as you were doing before. You have an assurance that I'm saved. That is the first work of salvation from sin. The second work of salvation is still there. To make you thoroughly free from sin. So that you are complete. As we always tell you this illustration. That when you wash a dirty cloth. The dirt are removed as you wash them in a detergent. But there is still a rinsing work. Rinsing work. That has to be done. To Clear the thing from every at every day stain whatsoever that is still left in the cloth. There are two processes or two processes to get death out of the cloth. Washing, the washing of regeneration, the and rinsing, the renewing. Of the Holy Ghost. Let's put that way. Let's tell you the two processes. So you need a thought, another thing to be done to you. As one who has already believed in Christ. This is where holiness comes. When, you, when the Bible says, They shall call them the holy people. It's not just that they remove their earrings. Do you mean by the way wear earrings? That their holiness should be evidenced by removing earrings? It's not that, okay, uh, we are not uh, palming our hair. We are not putting on attachment. Uh, we dress natural. That is just part of the acts of holiness. But the real holiness deals with the heart. Where Sin is thoroughly, totally removed from your life. And for this to be done, it is in two processes. For sin to be removed in your life, it is in two processes. 
And both processes are the processes of grace. Grace one saved you from your actual sin. Great grace number two takes away the stain of sin, the nature of sin, the power of sin in the heart is taken away. Then you are now free from sin. The salvation Jesus Christ came to the world for, taught mankind, and provided by his sacrificial day is the salvation that makes a woman totally free from sin in the heart and in actions. Totally. Your works are, your works are set free from sin. You don't act sin anymore. Then let's go to the thoughts and feelings of your mind. The thoughts and feelings of your heart that occupy that heart and keeps it tensed up. That's the second work that needs to be done. In this one, the first one, when you commit sin, people know she has committed adultery. She has committed masturbation. She has touched herself and released herself, released immorally. That's masturbation. It's sin. You even feel guilty for that. Oh, see her now in combat with someone abusing. She's abusing. She's fighting. See her now. Terrible anger. She's tearing somebody down. These are works of sin that the Lord told the woman caught in adultery. Neither do I condemn you. I bring salvation unto you. Go and sin no more. That is, these are things that you do by your exercise of your will. Or because your will has been overpowered by the force of Satan and the force of sin. Your will has been overpowered. So you do those things. You go to act them. But then it goes beyond that. To say there is sin in the heart, you sit just as you're sitting, and maybe a colleague of yours is doing something and you are envious of it. Nobody sees it. You are struggling with that envy in yourself. Nobody sees it. You are quiet. Somebody sits near you and you hate the person that is sitting near you. Although your mouth, you are laughing. It's seen in you. You are laughing. You are even talking to that person. But your heart is not accepting that person. You wish something should happen to this person. What will happen to get this person out of my presence? Do I match his leg or match her leg? How do I do it? Sin is dwelling in you, in you. In the act, you, you will not see it. You will not see it purposely. You, you will not be saying purposely. Pushing somebody. That will be, hey, you are a sinner. But what about the heart? So, God is today looking into the heart to help you get that disturbing thing in your heart out of you. So that you should rest. So that you should be happy inside. So that all those jealousies and pride that you show should be gone out of your life completely. For Jesus came to redeem from sin and purify. Redeem and purify. Get you out of sin and thoroughly cleanse you. That's what we are talking about. To enjoy Christ's full salvation from sin requires understanding, faith, and prayers. Understanding, faith, and prayers. Now, I must communicate this understanding. 
Because this is where there is the demarcation. Many churches don't cross over to teaching this. Why? Many don't believe that the holiness of heart is possible. Two, many think that with your struggle, with your prayers, you, you, will, you will be holy. So don't bother yourself or any other going back to God and praying for a definite act of, uh, of grace by which your inner tension, those hidden things in your heart should be dealt away with so you can be free. They don't believe it. And my people perish for lack of knowledge. So, knowledge is vital. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1 and verse 2. Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Everyone, you have come from different churches, different Christian background. You are even ministers, but you don't know these things. Yes, for Jesus said to Nicodemus, Are thou a teacher of the Jews, and knowest not thou these things? Yes, he doesn't know. So please pay attention because this is the reason why you have remained stunted. This is the reason why you embarrass the gospel of Christ by your life. Your, your character before the people you lead is shameful. You are zealous. You are sincere. God answers prayers when you pray. But what happened? There is some character in you. Even you cannot control yourself. Even you don't understand yourself. Therefore give attention to knowing what I am saying. So that you will follow this thing. Remember you said, Lord, teach me your word. I want to know your word. I want to do your word. I want to practice it. Therefore, teach me your word. That's what God is teaching you now. If you pay attention... And apply this thing, that impossibility you are seeing in your life will be removed. Yes. You who have been in sin for long, it shall be there no more. Yes. For ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, I will talk to you, number one, saved, but not sanctified. Saved, but not sanctified. Sanctification uh, have, has many meanings, or at least two meanings. One, it means consecration. Set apart, dedicated. As Christians are set apart from the world, a church can, can be sanctified. It is set apart for worship. It can be so. But then, it has a second meaning. And the second meaning has to deal with purification. After the first salvation. Thorough cleansing. After initial salvation. After forgiveness of sins after regeneration after the born again experience it has to do with thorough cleansing um, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 Ephesians chapter 5 I read verse 25 to 27 the Bible tells us here, say, Husbands, love your wives, 
Is it woman that you are still in betrothal relationship with? No. The woman that you have already brought in, brought home, the, the celebration has been done. Other people see that this is your wife. You have proclaimed to others, this is my wife. And you're already staying together. As married, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved or loves the church. It means church, not sinners, not the world. The church made up of people that he has gotten to himself. Made up of people that have believed on him. The church. Christ loved the church. Then, with loving the church, what did Christ do for them? It's, uh, the Bible says, and gave himself for it. Not for the world, but for the sinners. I mean, for the believers. Made up of the church. They are already believers. He, now, by this scripture, Christ gave himself for two kinds of people. One, the world. Sinners in the world. He gave himself for them. What for? Christ died for sinners. To save them from their sins. To grant them forgiveness of sins. To make them born again. To make them regenerated. To make them new creatures. He gave himself for them. But this scripture also says he gave himself for the church. What for? Verse 26. Verse 26 tells us why Christ gave himself for the church. It says that he might sanctify and cleanse it. Can you now say? The church. Already in Christ. But another reason why Christ died. Was to sanctify the church. To cleanse the church. That means. A second thing. Is waiting over your life. Being a member of the church. This is what is holiness. The people who are saying, when you say some, a church is, give, is a holiness church, this doctrine must be there. The doctrine of thorough salvation from sin. Perfect cleansing from sin. Christ died for the church for it, that he might sanctify it. So, the doctrine of sanctification as a second definite experience that a believer needs to receive after he has been born again. That is what makes the difference. Not just the removing of earrings. You remove earrings and troubles are still there. You sew your clothes well. You, the gowns go well. Below your knees. Three quarter. Praise God. But the problem is still there. There are no chains in your knees. But the problem is still there. You're terrible in your life. You're terrible in your ways. Terrible to your husband. Terrible even to the children. Terrible to the neighbors. What about the church? That you are hard, you are difficult. It's because something still needs to be done. You have not yet come to holiness. Sanctification has not taken place in your life. You have not come to holiness. You are still of other ranks. You have not become an officer. Yes. You have, not be, you have not crossed over to the officer ranks. You are still over there. You just got salvation. And that's all. And of course, you know you're saved. And people know that. But she tried. I don't know why. When it comes to this area, this lady, woman fails. Her attitude. I don't know why. It's because this second thing has not been done. Sanctification. Everybody call. Say it. Sanctification. Say it again. 
to make you remember this thing, you will stand up and say sanctification. Then you will sit down. Everybody stand up. Those who didn't stand up and as to say it and are still sitting down should stand up and say they are on second class. Now you can sit down. Now you are sitting down for business. The Lord will take a knife into your heart and sanctify you. It is the knife of the word of God that is going to do thorough cleansing in your own life. In Jesus name. In the book of Luke chapter 10 Luke chapter 10 I read verse 19 Oh, let's start from verse um, let's start from verse 17 the Bible says and the 17 return again with joy saying Lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name and he said unto them I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven behold I give unto you power to trade on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. But what? Rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, the Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto birds. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Are, are these people born again? Are the disciples born again at this time? Yes. Their names were written in the book of life. But somebody will say, then what is remaining? That name that is written in the book of life because you gave your life to Christ will be sustained in that book by your holiness as long as you live on in this life. It will be sustained. As the Lord talk about blotting some people's name out of the book of life. When they go off. So sanctification is that which is required to cause your name to remain in the book of life. Because it empowers the holy living. It makes holy living very cheap and simple. You can enjoy the holy living. And your name remains in the book of life. So, these people, as you see them, their names entered the book of life because they were born again. But, by the prayer Jesus prayed for them at the end of his ministry on earth, they were not yet sanctified. To tell you, born again, but not sanctified. Saved, but not sanctified. It's just the initial salvation. Not fully yet. Sanctification is required to remove those things from those sinful things, troubling with your heart, corrupting your life. Although they don't show up anyway. But they do sometimes. They come out. You can hear the smell around you. Sanctification deals with that. The disciples that were born again were practicing righteousness. And were not engaged in, in their normal sinful life. They however manifested some uncleanness. And some unhealthy characters. Showing that some remains of sin was in them. This includes envy. 
there was you would see some manifestation of envy in their lives again you will see some pride in their lives some manifestation yeah you won't see them demonstrating it practically anyway but it is there some uncleanness is there the flesh was manifesting you will see divisions among them you will see superiority complex i am higher than you who are you you can't be with us get out of this place you can't be here do you know me i am holiness you people you are in catholic church do you know? go and ask them who are, who is who are holiness people you will be you will not be standing before me that's pride that's pride so again you will find inordinate desires for clothes for position for self recognition for placement inordinate desires for greatness the way you are fighting it is almost as if you will use money to get it it shows you are acting in the flesh you have not your life has not been settled in the peace of righteousness and holiness there is still some personal energy you are still feeling why is that person rising up why are they using her why not me why shouldn't be me that it should be doing this that's the problem we are saying you are impatient to wait for your time because everybody has his own time there's time for everything even if all of us are meant to pass through this door there are those who will go first and others will follow later but we shall all pass through it but you lack the ability to be patient as a result there's the murmuring there is the criticism you are critical because your mind is not resting your mind is offended your mind something is disturbing it it's like when you want to cause fire to burn more you raise up the, the fire or the, the grass so the fire should burn more so something is raising up your mind so your mind should burn more in unholiness see it in the lives of the disciples james and john came to jesus for greatness they wanted to be greater than the remaining 10 people keep us one of us in the right hand side and the other on the left even between james and john there was a struggle who would be on the right hand side because the right hand side was better than the left that is there these things are unclean it makes christianity not to be beautiful it does not allow us to be in the relationship of the father the son and the holy spirit perfect one perfect entity it may, it does not allow us it does not allow you to be united in one with your brethren to allow your brethren let the will of god be done in their lives John the Baptist says, He that has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom, which I am, rejoices at the voice of the bridegroom. He must increase and I must decrease. How will you get that heart? Your, your proudful heart will not take it. Why is he increasing? Why? So, that thing is there. Although you're following in Christ, you are really going, you're manifesting well. But these things are there, making you obstacle in the way of the Holy Spirit, in the lives of others, even in your own life. Now, the other people, when they heard what these people were selfishly doing, they envied them, they murmured at them, they were angry at them, look at them. They want to be greater. And all of them are still, were still disciples of Jesus. 
All of them were still following on with Jesus. And even Satan obeyed us through thy name. All of them. They were testifying this thing. Yet, something was still wrong in them. Something was still wrong in them. Do you remember the spirit of division? We saw some people casting out demons in your name. And we forbade them. We are angry at them. They want to be like us. Who told them? Jesus is our own. Jesus is not with them. All these struggle, differences you are seeing in churches. Whatever the name your church go by, it can go by the holiest church on earth. It is not by name. It is by lie. Your, it is even pride you are using to disdain others. Pride is in you. It shows that you are not holy. You are magnifying your holiness. You are div- you're, you're disdaining others. It shows even you are not holy. You have sin in your life. You have pride in your life. And you are, a, you are not complete to glorify God in this gospel. Do you also remember vengeful spirit in the heart of the disciples? Jesus was to pass through a city in Samaria and the people refused because they saw that he was not going to remain in their city. He was going to pass to Jerusalem. And of course, the Samaria, the Samaritans and the, Jer- and the Jews have their own contentions because they feel that the Jews are belittling them. So they were also resisting to show their pride. So, and when they refused Jesus passing through the city for a short court journey to Jerusalem, James and John said, Lord, we will call fire now to consume these people. Jesus said, no, you don't know the type of spirit you are of. What is expected? The higher righteousness that is expected of you. You don't know about that. So, you can see all these things. Now, when a woman was spending her costly ointment on Jesus, do you know how <laughs> Judas, in a way, started it, in a way, and polluted others, and made others to murmur? Well, this is a waste. Waste. That's criticism. The spirit of criticism. Why should it not be sold for, for 300 pence? And be given to the poor. And Jesus said, that's wrong of you. Wrong attitude. So, if these things were not handled, the disciples couldn't work together. The reason why the church of Christ is not one today is because of this truth. That sanctification is not in Christianity. Many proclaim with their mouth they don't have it. And many don't know anything about it at all. Having known the manifestation of these things, Jesus needed to pray for the sanctification of believers. In John chapter 17, he prayed for the sanctification of the the disciples that were with him in the presence of perfect light. In the presence of the living world, they were not manifesting holiness because a law was not fulfilled. There was something that needed to be done. And if that is not done, you can be hearing this word every day, you will still not arrive at holiness. Your eyes must be open to ask for something, to pray for something. And we must also pray for it for the church as Jesus prayed. In John chapter 17, John chapter 17, I read from verse 1. This way spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given given him. And this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. 
I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the ways which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Are they believers? Yes. Are they, were they practicing the word? Yes, as much as is in their power. But something was still not perfectly correct in their hearts. Because another touch needed to come in. In your own life, this can be post, can be true. This testimony can be true, but there's still another touch. What is this other touch? Look at it in verse 17. Verse 16, rather, forward. The Bible says, They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Verse 17, everybody want to go. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Again, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Were they sanctified before? No. Believers saved but not sanctified. Believers but not in holiness. They have not attained to the full holiness. Believers. So, that is it. I am praying, Father, for all these ones who have believed your word, who have accepted me, sanctify them. Do another work in their lives. Do another work in their hearts. That is my prayer to God for you. May God do another work in your life. Your life is good but not complete. There is still something smelling in your life. It may not be smelling always. But once in a while, it oozes out of you. And your brethren and knowing that they know that your Christianity has K leg. Do you know what is called K leg? Is K properly balanced? Your sanctification does not have a real spiritual balance. Something is still inside. You are not able to control the anger of your heart. You have, have envy towards others. In fact, sometimes husbands and wives envy themselves. Envy one another. You are having problem. You are always wanting to dominate. You are not giving other people chance to function also. Because you want to function all the time. You were given a shining last women conference. And this conference you were not given a shining. This conference has left you because what is the reason? You are busy. You are confused now. What? I don't, in fact, I don't have test again. Something is wrong in your life. Something is affecting you. Something is affecting your life. It's making you not to flow. Because you're envying that person there. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Now, your interest is on beauty. If you see the way you're giving yourself to 
making yourself beautiful. Something is wrong in your heart. Something is wrong. You're thinking wrong. Your mind is not perfect in the Lord. Your Christian life has not reached that perfection. There is, it's washed but needs rinsing. You are washed but you need rinsing. You need sanctification. Everybody says sanctification. sanctification. Say it again. A rinsing experience required in the life of be a believer to make her thoroughly holy in her and life. A rinsing experience required in the life of a believer to make her thoroughly cleansed in the heart and manifest fully the righteousness of God. That is it. And you think it will come automatically? No. You think you will grow up onto it? No. The disciples had served Jesus for three and a half years. Did, did they possess it? For three years, being with Jesus, walking up and down. Were they sanctified at that time? No. It required a definite prayer. For such a definite experience. For it to be granted momentarily. Not gradually. But then it will grow up forward. Your mind will be peaceful in righteousness. You need a, And that is what makes you holy. This is what holiness means. The holy church. This is what is required of them. Many are not talking about it again. Because the preachers themselves have, have, have not got it. Or many talk about it carnally. In pride. Because oh, of course. Or else they teach it as a doctrine. But they have not gotten it. So they don't emphasize it. And so it's dying away from the church. A cardinal thing. Dying away from the church. And it gives liberty for people to profess Christianity and live every life. You who cannot agree with your brethren, are you sanctified? No, don't talk about it. But I'm born again. I, I know I'm a child of God. You know you are a child of God, but he has not finished his work in your life. He has not finished his work. You carry a child and then pour water on him and use omo. Uh, you said uh, soap to rub around on him. And you want to pour the second water that will cleanse the soap in his body. The child ran away. Has he taken bath? Has he taken bath? You ran away. God didn't finish his work on your life. That's why some dates are still there. When that soap in your body dries, will your body be clean? Your yeah, people will still say that there are deads here and there. You couldn't avail to God to get it thoroughly clear. That's why you're not in agreement with your brethren. The, the, your, the sin in your life, the pride in your life will not allow it. Or the envy in your life, since you're not prominent there, since they're not giving you a chance, will not allow you. You're still not sanctified. And you're not going to heaven. Because without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. You need this sanctification to make you holy to see Jesus. That's why the go the way to heaven is narrow. You need it. They say, what about those who don't hear? Let me not come there. I, maybe I don't have the time for that now. So, I want to talk to you who have heard. You have better chances. Or but better chance than those who have never heard. That's why the Lord is saying, these segregations of churches to denominations is a terrible thing. Because somebody who doesn't know the world gathers people to himself and says they are my church. They will not go anywhere. They will not hear anything from anywhere. And he doesn't have to give them. They die with him. 
They die with him. Because where knowledge, where, where there's no knowledge, my people perish. They perish. The man you're under doesn't know it. He doesn't know this truth. And cannot give you what he doesn't have. And so you die. And you go to hell. That's how life is. But because, and the devil uses this denomination thing to block people away from knowing the truth of Jesus. And they make people run away from where truth is. Make people run away. Thank God. God helped you to be here. And I pray that you will hear this thing without arguing them. We are opening scriptures and letting you know them. Don't argue about them. Go by faith. And the gospel of Christ is the gospel of faith. Accept it and ask for it. You will see the difference. So, sanctify them. These people have been with me for three and a half years. They are saved already, but they are not sanctified. See again what Jesus Christ said about this prayer for sanctification. See what he said. He said in verse 20, Neither pray I for this alone, but for them also, who shall believe on me through their word. Sanctification is for those who have believed. I'm not only praying for these ones who are with me now, believers, but they will go about preaching the gospel of some and men shall believe them. Now I am praying also for those who shall come to believe that they will need sanctification. That they will need sanctification. Neither pray I for this alone, but for them also which are, shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. What hinders oneness is sanctification. What promotes oneness, what, what promotes oneness is sanctification. Lack of sanctification hinders oneness of the people of God. Because pride will not allow people to come together. Pride will not allow people to come together. What promotes oneness is sanctification. When you are sanctified, your flesh is dead to sin. Your flesh is dead. Now, somebody said, how many people were hung on the cross at the time of Jesus? Three people. Now, they came to test have they, had they, whether they had died. What did they use to test whether Jesus had died? A spear. They thrust a spear into the body of Jesus. Did he shake? Did he shake? Blood and water came out. There was no shaking. Totally dead. Sanctification. Little things that will happen just because of accommodation. You cannot rest. Why is my bed, this person's bed, why did they deny me this place? Why did... It shows you are still alive. Die. I said die. Then these things will mean nothing. This thing, sleeping on bed or lying on the ground, has no meaning. The heart is peaceful. Little things like that you cannot stand. You are envious. You are fighting. You are criticizing. You are shouting. You are. You are not. You are not dead yet. Your Lord was tested to know whether he had died with a spear. Yours, what trial comes to test you? Trial comes your way. What has a fellow Christian done? What has an unbeliever done against you? It's just to try. Have you died? Have you died? It's like you, brought, you take a child to sleep. 
because you want to go somewhere. And you are all rubbing it to ensure that he sleep. You rub, rub, rub. The child is shaking, but this, this child has not slept. How will I leave this place now? You have not slept. You have not been sanctified to get those things, all those irritations in your life will just disappear because a dead man does not feel the sword. A dead man does not feel the sword. You are feeling the sword because you are still alive. And the Lord said, go to, go to, go back to the Father. When the thieves didn't die, what did they do to them to die? They broke their bones so that they should die. Because there was no time. Do you want their, your bones to be broken? So please ask God, let this flesh die. So that all the people are now are afraid of you. You have met a bad name. Wow. Because you are, you are alive in the flesh, active, and you are saying you are a Christian. I am holy. Which holiness? You have not come to holiness. If they smite you in one cheek, turn the other. That's what the Bible says. But yours, even before they raise up their hand, you are ready to handle that. You are ready to handle that. Say, not me, you can't. You cannot. So, that's what we need to understand. Saved, but not sanctified. So, this inner life of envy, pride, divisions, superiority complex, inordinate desire for greatness, anger, judgmental spirit, require cleansing or sanctification for the purpose of holiness. This also hinder full peace and unity among believers. These things lead to gossip, backbiting, murmuring, disagreement, and other ungodly behaviors that abuse the pure gospel. Hence, Jesus prayed for their sanctification. Jesus prayed for their sanctification. Now, sanctification of believers. It is the will of God that when you are born again, you should seek him also for sanctification. It is normal of a man or of a person, when, of a woman, when she washes her clothes, she takes it for rinsing. So God wants that as he saved you, you should also be sanctified. In First Peter, Chapter 1, verse 14 to 16. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14 to 15. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance, but as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. God is calling you to holiness. Come, he will sanctify you. He is going to do it. He wants you to be holy as he himself is holy. Compare your holiness with God's holiness. That's what God says. Don't commit sin. Don't tell lies. Don't steal. Don't cheat. Come inside. Don't envy people. Don't envy people. Don't manifest pride. Don't be irritable. No. No. That's what the word of God is telling us. Sanctification is an experience of grace. As salvation and baptism with the Holy Spirit. It is a provision made by Christ's sacrifice uh, as salvation. Well, salvation from sin is required for all sinners to make them born again and live a new life. Sanctification of heart is required for all believers to make them holy in heart and life. Salvation sets a sinner free 
from the power of sinful life and works so that she lives without performing the sinful works she was bound to anymore. Galatians 5, 19 to 21 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, witchcraft, uh, lasciviousness, drunkenness, envyings, and on so on. These are works that you do them. But when you are saved, like the woman were caught in adultery, you are freed from these works. Be not deceived. He that doeth this thing shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What are those things? Masturbation, homosexuality, lesbianism. What are those things? But in, in, in feminine, you're behaving, a man behaving like a woman, just for sensual bodily something, or whatever it is, you know them. The physical works of sin, stealing, lying, all this, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. But in salvation, you are washed. You are cleansed of them that you don't go again to perform those things. You don't go again to do them. But then, the Bible tells us, the heart, needs to experience the second work of God to give it the holiness of life. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 25 to 27 Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 25 to 27 the Bible tells us about these things, saying, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Then, verse 26, let's read it. One, two, go. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. Can you see that? The motto, the salvation of God. Your heart is stubborn. You have no respect for people. You don't respect elders. You're stubborn. Even your leaders, you don't respect them. You're stubborn. Your husband, you don't respect him. You're stubborn. Your heart is hard. Although you say you're a Christian. I'm born again. And you speak in tongues. I'm born again. You go for crusades. You preach. People get, people answer, people get healed. Something really happens. To show that in some ways you're connected with God. But holiness. Holiness. Your, when you handle a woman to deal with. When you handle a person to deal with. People will just be, those standing around will be saying, Hey, is this our mommy? This mommy needs to go back to the cross. You are telling the truth. She needs sanctification. To take you with a stony heart. You need sanctification. Because your heart is, you, you don't even understand why your heart is hard. That you, why am I not fearing anybody? Why is it I don't have respect for my husband? Why? I, I don't know. I can't. A stony heart is in you. And God says, Christ gave himself again for you as a believer to remove that stony heart. So that he can give you a, 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 a soft heart. Soft. 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 And then he will cause you to keep his word. His righteousness. And do it. You will perform the righteousness of God. 
The experience is received by the believer who strongly desires to live a holy life. Consecrate and praise to God in faith for him. God who now says, I will remove the stubborn heart from you. I will give you a heart of flesh. Listen to what he says in verse 37. In verse 37 of Ezekiel chapter 36. Are you there? Let's say it in chorus. One, two, go. Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. Stop there. Jesus prayed for his disciples. You have to pray for yourself. You have to pray. He prayed for them because they didn't know anything about it. But Jesus knew that this is what they needed. The, the second experience was this. You now know, go and pray for yourself. Intercede also for your husband and for the members of the church that God will sanctify you. Sanctify these women. Sanctify the men too. Take away this stubborn heart. Otherwise, you will be claiming holiness. I am a member of holiness revival movement. And your life will not be answering to it. In your very house, you will be fighting each other in the house. You will be marching, you will be talking, although you may not fight physically. Because, no, I, I cannot slap, I cannot do, but the things you will be exchanging among yourselves will show that pollution is inside you. Pollution is inside you. How do you live? When you come together as women, how do you live? Maybe you live with other women in the house. How are you living there? Can two women really be friends and live in the same house? Live well and love and love well, love for one week? <laughs> you know, uh, our beloved Pastor Mikhailo said something. He said, in a program like this, I prefer to carry men to the kitchen to cook for people to eat than to carry women. Although women are the, are, are the born cooks. But I prefer men. Why? He said, when a man, when men are cooking food and uh, somebody put salt in the soup. And as they taste the salt, it is too high. Another person said, Kai! There's too much salt in this soup. Then the person said, is that so? Then let's add water. Let's add water to it. But a woman puts salt in soup and another woman comes and says, there's too much salt in this soup. Uh, uh, you want to humiliate me? Are you the one cooking for my husband? Look at this one. He wants to come and humiliate me in this, in this program. You want to embarrass me? Tell her that she needs sanctification. <laughs> Tell her again. Tell her the third time. Exactly. You, sanctification will change your thoughts. Because that pride that you want to defend your life by pride will not be there anymore. You are free. You are yearning for the truth. You will be yearning for perfection. Give knowledge to a wise man. He will be wiser. He will be appreciated because it will make him wiser. You are now looking for more righteousness. So if somebody corrects you, where will you be angry? Oh, sister, your cloth, this your cloth is short. Oh, is that so? I will go and change. That is, uh, look at I came to holiness movement before you. Are you hearing me? Go and think about what, what I've told you now. Be then, they are, we have turned the holiness movement into a mechanical name. Not experience of life. Not a people who have gotten experience of life. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So that they can live a life of truth. Does this irritations among you? How are they doing it in the choir? Are you living well there? Or you sing mechanically when you go back? 
I was singing and you were coughing. What is the reason? You cough into my nose. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We are praying for you that this thorough cleansing will be in your life. That as you are sleeping together in the hostels, there is peace, there is joy, there is friendliness, there is righteousness. Everybody wants to be the least among you. You, you Are you old? Show your humility by sweeping the place. If it helps to dress somebody's own bed, help to dress somebody's own bed. Say, so who dressed this bed? Ah, sister, I just felt that dressing. Mommy, it is you. Your mommy is sanctified. Say, mommy is sanctified. Mommy wants to do, to do something good. Her heart is looking for something good to do. Something good to say. Something good to help someone. That is what this righteousness means. God gives you a heart that wants righteousness. Not a tough heart. He will remove that tough heart. In Jesus name. Sanctify them. May God sanctify these women. To go and show forth real Christian life. Hey. If you come out of this program. And go back home. And immediately you arrive. You say hey hey come here. That child come here. Who put this thing here? Mommy has come back. That, co- that conference has never touched her. That conference has never touched her. And then next women program, you say, hey, let's go to that holiness movement program. In fact, in fact, which in fact? What has it done to your life? You came, you didn't change. May God stretch, stretch out his hand. Right to your heart. And remove that stubborn thing out of you. And fix another soft heart in your life. That is my prayer for your life. So that people will adorn the gospel of Jesus. People will be happy in, in, to know that this gospel is a different gospel. People will really believe we have something different here. Are you going to do it? Will you ask God to take away the stubborn heart out of you? It's just to say, God, rinse me. I've given my life to Jesus, but I need rinsing. I need rinsing. Because this type of anger, I can't understand it. Ah, This envy is coming automatic. I don't understand it. I, this malice. I'm finding it difficult to say to just get things out of my heart. I, I see, sh- God, I can't understand this. Rinse me, woman. Say, God, rinse me. God, rinse me. You are saying, God, sanctify me. That's what God wants to hear. Pray, and I will hear you. Consecrate for this. Long for this holiness experience. Long for it. Struggle for it. Pray for it. When the Lord gives you sanctification of heart, you will see the evidence by heart peace, assurance of holiness, and the demonstration of it. You will just know. Great peace have they that love thy law. Nothing shall offend them. Quiet. All those weights you are hearing, this man said this, this woman said this, will not. Your heart has been miraculously tempered with to in, to take it to the higher level of holiness. Born again, you could do some holiness, yes. But now, a higher percentage has been put in there for a second grade, at a second grade. Now, you cannot feel all these irritations anymore. What these people are saying, and they're looking at me. What does that mean? A, a different thought will take over. Instead of saying they're looking at me because they think that my cloth, they're thinking that this is my cloth. They don't know the value of this cloth I'm wearing. You're busy talking to yourself. Who told you that they're thinking about your cloth? So, your mind will change. Your attitude will change. 
Because the, the higher grade of holiness will be working in your heart. The Holy Spirit too will cooperate with you and will work away sin. As you pray to him, asking him for grace, every day he will be supplying you grace in a higher rate than that of that person who is just saved. Yes. You are saved. You are a member of the church. You are sanctified. You are now at the worker's level before God. Is that clear? I'm just giving an illustration. You're promoted in holiness. When you are sanctified, God promotes you in holiness. God gives you more grace in holiness. God supervises you more because you're more responsive to God. You're more sensitive. You're more sensitive to sin. You can pick sin in the distance. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's recently I was told, because normally when we travel abroad, especially in the white man's land, we we'll see a particular person standing and looking at us coming from the plane. What is he standing there for? I didn't know until I was told that the person standing there has is trained to detect criminals by just looking at you as you are walking. They'll just pick somebody, hey, hey, can you come? That person is likely to have cocaine. He's likely to have some something. So he's just watching you. God will increase your level. When you see sin, you can pick it from a distance. Because your sensitivity to holiness has increased. Your sensitivity to sin has increased. You have more of God in your life. The prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. You cannot discern what is good and what is evil. Better, higher, and truer. Because you are sanctified. The Lord sanctify you holy. Can you live your life in this calm as a sanctified woman? As you are seeing people, just be behaving sanctified. After you have prayed, claim it, go and practice it. Amen? We will be watching you. Angels will be watching you. In the hostels, in your, even as you are in, in the hall, uh, in the kitchen, anywhere, we will be seeing sanctification in the lives of the people. People giving to holiness. Amen? Well, quickly, let me just run it up. Yes, go and show the holy lifestyle. Holy lifestyle. I say, sanctification will give you inner freedom from the force of sin. Inner freedom from the force of sin. Again, it makes you forgive others freely. That tension of malice. Somebody, uh, this person offended me. You will never want to keep offense. Because you will want to defend your holiness before God. You will want to defend your holiness. The sin, more of God is experienced by you now. Because God is holy. He has invited you to holiness. And you have come to, you are advancing to him in holiness. You are going closer. You will not want anything to draw you back. So malice, unforgiveness, all can, you will not accept them to be in your life. Again, humility. Humility. This goes with submission, meekness, gentleness. The sanctified woman is clothed with humility. There's no pride again. Humble yourself. All age is not it doesn't mean anything as much. You are old, but God has said somebody over you. You are old, and then you have other, you are a brother among others. Although we respect you for your age, you don't stand on your age. Because to stand on your age is carnality. We're not dealing with age. So, humility, or educational qualification. Who is who? Doesn't mean anything here. Who is who? Doesn't mean anything. Where are you walking? That is not 
important because it may not contribute to your going to heaven. It may not. So, all, I mean, humility is in your life. Your language is humble. Some of you, you inherited it from your family. Rugged life. The inherit, that, that type of thing. Turn away from that bad inheritance. Don't say it is our family. Your family is not from heaven. We're teaching you about heaven. Things that are not of heaven, throw them away. Follow holiness. Follow humility, meekness, meekness, humility. That's what God expects of you. Fervent love. Love is not proud. Love is not boastful. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love does not wish people evil. Love is able to bear with people. Love endures wrong, suffers long, endures all things. Yes, you have love in your heart. God is love. The more of God in you, the more of love in you. Get God more into you. Get his holiness. Say, be like me in holiness. Then love will come out of you. Be like me in holiness. Then love will be higher in your heart towards people. That's what God desires. And again, it tells us property of sanctification, of, of holy life. You are holy in adornment. You are holy. Can you now see that the clothing aspects comes last or come? It's not the main thing. It is your heart. It is your character. Then the clothing one comes later. First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. I read from verse one to verse five. The Bible tells us saying, Likewise ye wives, be in subjection unto your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation, coupled with fear. Chest lifestyle. Conversation means lifestyle here. Lifestyle. When they look at, when your husband looks at your lifestyle, he will feel attracted to this gospel. He will feel attracted. Some husbands do that. Feel attracted to the gospel. That's why the Bible says, show it in the life of holiness before your husband. Otherwise, you'll be claiming, I am holiness movement, I am holy. You people go to Catholic. You people go to watch one. You people go to this one. You go to the, but we are holy. And your character is not agreeing with what you're saying. The man doesn't see any difference. So a, a man was saying, all about women conference finishes after one week in the life of my wife. When she goes home, Give her one week to show women conference. After that, forget it. He has finished. Back to square one. Is it that man that you'll be boasting holiness to? That you cannot display a good character. No evidence of bearing all things. Speaking anyhow. Respecting no husband. Respecting no one. Feel great. You must be leader. Your husband is your boy. Your husband is your boy. And you say you are a holy woman. Holy? You are preaching gospel about? Preaching for what? Preaching what? Are you even born again? Let's even talk about that. So, that's what the word says. While they behold your chest conversation coupled with fear. Who's adorning? Can you see holiness and then the dressing? Who's dressing? Who's dressing? The dressing of a sanctified woman. 
the dressing of a holy woman whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel two three things one here do three gold wearing golds three and four um, number two wearing gold number three clothing here do palming attachment wool with all call it what all those he said not that type of thing not that type of thing what are you doing that for what linens hey, i want to please my husband because he's a sinner god said don't please your husband with those things don't please your husband with those things he, he says i should wear them for him he didn't create you. Your creator said don't wear it for him. Your husband and the creator who is higher? Your husband and your creator who is higher? Your husband can die but your creator will not die. And you die, you can also die before your husband and go and face the judgment of the creator. What about that? Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning. Don't give yourself to fleshly dressing. The flesh. I want to appear gray. Listen. God is the one to put love in the heart of your husband. By the character. He's showing you what you will do. So that he will assist you in the life of your husband. You think it's by your power? By dressing? He said, let it not be that outward adorning the adorning of plating the hair. The plating of the hair there is not weaving the hair or using trade as some of you think about. It's talking about sophisticated hairdo. Meant to attract and entice. That's what it, mean, it means. Sophisticated hairdo. Worldly hairdo. Which is meant to entice. To attract. Don't do that. And again, the wearing of gold. He's talking about the earrings, the rings, the chains of the, whether with great sum or small sum. The way, the way, where did they come about? Because of pride of person. The wedding ring you are wearing. Eh, this wedding ring, we bought it for this amount of money. And you who don't have, he said, I didn't have money, so I bought a common one. God says you don't need those things. Don't wear them. You don't need them. It, it, it becomes an idol. You're trusting in that idol to keep your husband. It will not work. How, when does God become a physical object? When did God give physical object to man to observe? When did God give physical object to human being to keep them or to keep their marriage? It's idolatry. Get yourself clean from those things. From chain, bracelets, and beads. You don't need them. They are ungodly. They come from the world. They are satanic. They are satanic. Demons control them. When you put a pot on top of a tree, turn the pot this side, an open pot, what will enter into it eventually? Bees will enter there. Those who are harvesting honey, they just go to the bush and put a pot on top of trees. Some put it on the ground and make it open. Bees will go there. Put those rings in your hand. Demons will attract. What they say, they are not from demonic world. Demons will be attracted to them. Because they have the property of Satan. They are ungodliness. And you will be tortured the more. God will withdraw. Because you are trusting in the rain. You are trusting in the ring. So, he withdraws. You are an idol worshiper. He said, don't do, don't, don't wear all those things. Don't. That's what the Lord is saying. Whatever your church has told you. They have not told you the correct thing. If the Pami asks you to wear those things and not bother, they have not told you the correct thing. They themselves will not see God because they are lying preachers. Again, it says, or of wearing of apparel. That doesn't mean you should not wear clothes. Just like the one doesn't mean you should not plate your hair in, weaving your hair or using 
uh, trade. But he's talking to you about flamboyant, sophisticated clothes. Which are meant for attraction. Now, they were great, sophisticated clothes. But now they have become tat tat clothes. To show you your parts. Show your body. All this cloth that these women are wearing. Please, my sisters. You who have been in holiness, help me in this business. You will find some of these women wear, wear gown that will stop at their knee. Or just a little down. As they are going, their, their thighs are exposed, their ankles are exposed, still pulling on me. And showing that this woman is unclean in the sight of God. I hear she says she's a holy woman. Or even a woman leader. Please, tell them to go and change those things. When these women, or skates, their skates don't reach well. They are still flying on their legs. They want to behave corporate with the world. Rebuke them sharply. We don't wear those things here. And you women, what makes you women leader when you can see a lady not dressing well in your chapters, in your states, and you say nothing? But is the Bible is that is that is it, the Bible called called uh, some dogs that what they are uh, dogs that do not bark is that dumb dogs that do not bark son of man I've made you a watchman bark at evil in the church but you are dumb no value in your life you are allowing evil to come into the church you are allowing people to wear these kids that are not going down. That don't go down well. You allow them. Why? Because you are not sanctified. Your heart is saying, Hey, I don't want to bring problem to myself. Unsanctified heart. That does not, that's not died to accusation of mankind. That has not died to blame of mankind. You're still sensitive to human blame. You're still sensitive to human criticism. So you cannot go forward and act righteousness. You cannot attend to the holiness of God. Don't you know that he that sees sin and does not correct it to him also is a sin? Don't you know that? Can you be holy and see sin and never leave, and leave the sin to go? And it is in your power to get that thing corrected. You say nothing and allow them there. Women wearing cloth and the, sh the shoulder, their backs are open. Their breasts are open. You say nothing. You say nothing. And that woman has been coming. If it is that she does not have clothes, then you, you saw new one for her. You gather money to sow new one for her. Why should she corrupt the church? Why must we not maintain the same standard? So, watch it out. Because there are some of these Buddha are not, are not ready to change. I was in a church. I saw one of these girls. I think the girl should be maybe around 24. Her skate, uh, her, she was wearing gown. It was just fly. It didn't reach the knee. Kai, it was too much for me. I couldn't bear I went to one elderly man. He said, are you not seeing this girl going up and down? Inter church come out. Inter church come out. Can't you rebuke this girl? He said, ah, 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 leave them, leave them, leave them. If you rebuke them, they will leave the church. That's it. She's doing some business there. She's servicing some people there. That's why, it, no, 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 let her not leave the church. A little level, leaven it the whole law. That is it. Take care of your clothing. Take care of your clothing. Watch those who wear any kind of cloth. Stand on the, be the watchdog for the church. I've made you a watchman, a watchwoman to maintain holiness. But do it in love. Do it in humility. Let the person not know, think that you're embarrassing her. Do it in humility. The sins of women are too many that we must just be more, we must tighten our belt to handle them all. Otherwise, the sins will overcome us on the way. Tighten your belt and overcome all of them. Now, take it again. Stand to it whether she will continue in the church or not. She's free to go. For why should one man kill everybody? For why should one woman kill everybody? Don't you know God that because of one person, the, the rest of you are in danger if you don't treat that person in justice so let her go 
Hey, well, hey, hey, she needs to hear the word of God. Is she ready as you see her? When you corrected her, did she take the correction? Let she leave the place. Let the smoking wood be removed from the fire. That the people should rest. Amen. Yes. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. In that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Let your attention go to your heart. To be changing cloth, changing cloth is a sin. Let cloth not become an idol to you. Anytime you see a cloth, ah, this one, I will take it, another one, ah, this, you, you are serving idol. You are not under control. The Bible says the woman should be made to be moderate. That's scripture. Moderate. Let your moderation be known. Even if you have much money, don't waste the money on clothes. Don't. Don't train your body on diverse type of clothes. Go by, all things are expedient for me, but not all things are necessary. All things are expedient for me. I will not be sold under the bondage of anything. So, control your mind. Hey, another thing. Everybody say another thing. Say it again. A man came to Jesus and said, I want to follow you. No, let me put it this way now. Let me change it. A woman came to Jesus and said, I will follow you. And then Jesus said, do you remember the commandment? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt honor your father and mother. He said, I've been keeping that with all my life. He said, okay. Go and all those clothes in your box. You have kept them for many years. Go and empty them and give them to the poor. Then come and follow me in righteousness and holiness. How do you think that woman will behave? Eh? Hundred shoes? No, no, no. Two hundred. Because she has been buying them for long. How many wrappers? Fifty boxes. How many what again? Hi. When will I finish distributing all these things? That be very careful. Don't heap treasures to yourself. Control yourself. Control yourself in, in your wears. Control yourself. And give to the poor. You have clothes that you have never used for the past three years. And you are not going to use them again. Even that box that those clothes are. You will never visit that box again until rapture. And you think the rapture will take you. Go and get those clothes and give them to the poor. All you who are looking clothes, looking for clothes, clothes are coming. Your sisters will go and empty their boxes and be sharing clothes. Okay, bring them here. Are you hearing? You don't even know whom to give them. Go and bring them to, go and bring them here. Take them to your coordinators. We will distribute them for you. And ye shall have eternal life. Ye shall have a house in heaven. Ye shall have treasure in heaven. For why should you be playing and damning clothes and some other people cannot even come to church because they don't have. Will God like that? Will God like that? Live a holy life. Control what you have. Has thou found honey, my son? Eat that which is sufficient for you. Lest ye vomit it for overmuch eating. Moderate yourself. Control yourself. Live the holy life. Live the holy life. Go and live the holy life. You will stand up and pray for sanctification. You will ask the Lord to sanctify you and cleanse you. Because after this manner, the holy women of old time adorned themselves. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. Go and do it. Go and adorn yourself in practical life. Yes, live daily in vic all victory over sin. Every day, sin shall not have dominion over you. Let the power of God come upon you now. 
Receive the power of God now. Your life should be changed now. Let the blood of Jesus go inside your heart and cleanse that heart and give us a pure woman, holy woman, ready for the rapture. Rise up upon your feet and present yourself to God, the God of heaven to sanctify you. God sanctify you. Let God sanctify you. Let God sanctify you. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. May the Lord sanctify you holy. Take away the stubborn heart out of you. Make you humble. Make you loving. Make you patient. Make you bearing with people. Not responding to little, little things they have done. Die to your flesh. Tell God to kill your flesh.
Jesus name we pray you will have time to pray through because this is end time while the Lord is gathering people in mass he is sanctifying them to him for fitness forever that's why you need to be sanctified now I am going to intercede for your sanctification raise up your hands Jesus prayed for the church I'm going to pray for you I'm going to pray for this movement that the Lord will sanctify them in Jesus name we pray Almighty Father Jesus prayed for the church for the believers that they should be sanctified and truly it worked in them and they experienced great unity now Lord the devil came in and rose up self after some many years of the church until now in many assemblies the flesh is ruling pride envy division and all have come in among your people father the word of God is settled in heaven forever. Amen. Jesus the same yesterday, today and forever. Amen. That which he prayed for in the yesteryears, Lord, and you answer, you will do it now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. For the Lord said, I pray not only for this, but for them also. Who shall believe in me through their word? Here are body of believers that have believed in you. They have heard your word. They are following you. Lord, their names are in your book of life. And you want their names to remain there. Oh Lord, sanctify them in Jesus' name. My God, you understand the world, for you are the maker of the hearts of men. And you say they have a stubborn heart, they have a hard heart. And you make a promise that you will take away the hard heart the stony heart out of their flesh that you will give to them and heart of flesh right now i stand before the god of heaven and request that you take away the stony heart out of these women out of this men in jesus name oh living father you said we should be like you. Be ye holy for I am holy. Now I pray for the soft heart of holiness. I pray for the spirit of holiness. To come upon their heart in Jesus name. Beautify your people. Amen. Let them carry the beauty of the Lord. Amen. Jesus, thank you. These are the people you are preparing to take to the Father. And the Father is holy. Stamp your stamp upon them. Stamp your mark upon them. Lay the blood of Jesus come into your heart now and cleanse you and part you and sanctify you in Jesus name. Make a promise to God and say, Lord, I will not draw back from holiness. Tell God, open your mouth and tell him, I will not draw back from holiness. Oh Lord, I will not draw back from holiness. No, 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 no. I will continue. I will continue. I will continue in your holiness. In your holiness. I will not draw back from holiness. I will not draw back from holiness. I will continue. I will continue. I will continue. 
I will not draw back from holiness. name we pray you have chosen the way you have chosen the way you have chosen the right way the way of holiness Keep on choosing this way, keep on following this way, keep on moving on this way, the way of holiness. Amen. Chosen the way. This is the only way. The narrow way, it is the right way, the way of holiness. Amen. Sister, you have made this choice. It is a wonderful. Wonderful choice you have made, that choice of holiness. Am I way? We have chosen the way. We have chosen this way. We have made the right choice. To follow holiness, am I? Oh yeah. Jesus is coming now to take us to heaven. He will take the holy ones who follow holiness. You have chosen the way, you have chosen the way, you have made the right choice, the choice of holiness. 
Since you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe
you purchased me with your blood you are my lord and my savior you left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin I believe in you, you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. Oh, oh, oh. you are the living Savior. I believe in you, you are my Lord and Savior, I believe in you, you are the living Savior, you can Chased me with your blood, you are my Lord and my Savior. You left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin.
I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe.